print email Facebook Twitter more broom artist exposes Australia's dark chapters of history with photographic series imagine this a pregnant woman is forced off a boat to free dive for pearl shells as her husband watches from a lugger at gunpoint historically many women drowned in these circumstances but it didn't stop the pearl masters women can dive longer because of the higher amount of oxygen in their blood this dark and hidden story of Aboriginal blackbirding in broom and roven in Western Australia is one of several little-known stories explored by artist Michael Jallaroo Doris in the eight photographs in his exhibition Scar 3, showing in Sydney as part of Head-On Photo Festival. Blackbirding is a type of modern slavery in which Indigenous people are forcibly removed from their home countries to undertake the toughest and least desirable manual labour. In Australia in the mid-19th century, approximately 62,000 South Sea Islanders were recruited to work on sugar and cotton plantations in Queensland. Their descendants are still fighting for acknowledgement of this history. Scars of the Land and Mines Scar 3 is the third iteration of an ongoing photographic exhibition in which Doris explores the designs and metaphor of scarification on the mind, land and skin of Australia's first peoples. Traditionally an indigenous Australian culture, scarification was a signifier of a person's place in the community and an expression of identity, experience and beauty. Almost a non-verbal language carved right onto the skin. Once you became initiated, you'd get a scarring done, so that when you're out in the world people would know that you had gone through law, Taurus explains. It's a lost art nowadays. The self-taught artist photographs painted up bodies on country then uses a blade to scar the one-off prints by hand, utilizing a traditional tree carving technique from the Kimberley region. In the artwork skin, for example, Doris replicates traditional female body scarification by carving lines and dashes across the breasts, chest and belly of the figure in the print. Torres compares the results to Rigi, or engraved pearl shells, which served as a valuable cultural artifact amongst peoples of the Kimberley Coast for thousands of years. I need to draw people in with beautiful imagery because, non-indigenous, people don't want to see or believe the stories if they're faced with a confronting image. He says, second chance born and raised in Broome, Taurus goes by the bush name Jalaru for his creative work. His mob are the Duke and Enduri from the Broome region, the Jaburjabur from northern Broome and the Gunyandi from the Fitzroy Valley. As a young man, Taurus spent his days drawing and carving. Even today he carries around notebooks full of sketches, observations, scribbled notes and line work designs inspired by the Bilbara and Kimberley region's peoples animals and landscape. After studying art and design at TAFE in Perth, he returned to Broome in the early 2000s and joined Gulari Media, Broome's indigenous broadcaster. Over the next 16 years he taught himself everything from writing scripts to designing websites, operating television cameras, graphic design and event management. He cites 2000 as a crucial year in his life. He was diagnosed with non-Hodgkin lymphoma and given six months to live which led him to seriously reconsider his career. A large chunk of my professional life was bringing other people's dreams and visions to life. I got to the point where I was sick of that. I wanted to start telling my stories, Doris explains. Even though Doris outlived that six months, serious damage to his nerves meant he couldn't draw, paint or carve for nearly 12 years. In the meantime, he developed his photography practice. In 2016, Doris changed careers so he could focus on creating art. By day, Doris is an educator in the Broome Regional Aboriginal Medical Service, BRAMS, where he counsels prisoners to quit smoking. You can see the trauma at a lot of different levels with this mob. I have to keep telling people that even though there is all this trauma, it is not us, it can't define us. Yes we need acknowledge it, but it cannot stop us. At nights and on weekends, he lives out his second life as artist with an insatiable drive to preserve and visualize his community's oral history and illuminate major social issues such as self-harm, suicide, drug abuse and the demonizing of black men in this country. A lot of the stories I tell seem fictional, but it all happened. We just never had the media in our areas telling our stories. Healing trauma Although Doris has journalistic experience, he believes that his fine arts and conceptual approach to depicting his community is more empowering for them than a photojournalistic approach. I'm dead set against photographing my people in that poverty porn way. A lot of non-indigenous photographers come into my region, and other regions, and make a living and name for themselves by capturing people in community life and making it look like a third world country, he explains. With all of Doris' artworks, 
there is a degree of collaboration with the subject, and although the logistics of shooting on country are often challenging, he insists on this practice as it offers a visual truth and allows the person to feel pride and strength. For example, in the artwork Mother's Connection, a stark black and white portrait captures a tender moment between a mother and daughter, with the coastal backdrop at the woman's request, as a nod to her saltwater country roots. This work is about the stolen, generation, this is my interpretation, and the mother in that photograph is the granddaughter of one of the girls from the film Rabbit Proof Fence, says Doris. The portrait was planned and shot over four months, during which the woman was fighting a legal battle for custody of her daughter. Her hands, are not at full embrace, her fingers are almost touching but they're not because she's got this constant fear and anxiety that her child could be taken at any moment says Torres. Back in the day she would have been forcibly removed but today it's through the courts and legal system. With his photo Blackbird, he tries to draw attention to the little-known history of Aboriginal blackbirding, but also encourage deeper investigation and complex thinking. I want, non-Indigenous people, to embrace it even if it's confronting, and ask where do I find more information about this? Doris says, the same companies, Pearlmaster families and local Aboriginal families are still here, in Broome, so there's still some deep-rooted denial and ongoing trauma. It's part of our history. From, our blood, they've built their wealth. Who do you think built the jetties and maintained luggers, and sorted the pearl shells? It was the local Aboriginal people. SCAR 3 runs from May the 5th to the 20th at the Head-On Photo Festival Hub in Paddington Town Hall.